What is going on guys, it's Noah here with Custom RC Mods. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be scratch building the FT Simple Cub from Flight Test. Now, as you know, I'm a little bit more of an advanced pilot. I've built and flown over 50 flight test designs and designs of my own. Uh, so I do know my way around town in this RC hobby. However, I've gotten a lot of requests recently to do somewhat of a beginner series. So we're gonna be building the FT Simple Cub. I'm gonna give you my thoughts and give you some tips and tricks along the way on how to scratch build your first airplane. Because although the build videos from Flight Test do a really great job showing you guys how to build these planes, they don't really cover the scratch building uh, kind of period in the planes, which is kind of what threw me off when I started. So I'm gonna immensely cover the uh, scratch building process. I've got three sheets of foam here and all the electronics I need to get this plane built. Um, but basically, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna print off your plans for this plane. And if you don't have like a big plot or anything, which most people don't, you're gonna have to use the eight and a half by 11 tiled A size plans, which is what these are. And I would not print all of them because this is 50 sheets of paper. And I actually just wasn't thinking, I just pressed print Print, and I realized that it took like 15 minutes to print this and it's 50 sheets of paper and you really only use half of that. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and scratch this, build this right now. So first off, let's go ahead and just talk about the materials that you're going to need for this. So first you're going to need your three sheets of Dollar Tree foam or whatever material you're going to be using, but I definitely recommend Adam's Ready Board from the dollar store. It's obviously only a dollar um, a sheet, so you're going to need three of those. And then I'm using a Power Pack B equivalent from Flight Test, but this is only like half the price. So this is an A2212 uh, motor and a 30 amp ESC combo. I'll leave the links to all my electronics in the description below. And these are uh, Amazon servos that are SG90s uh, from a company like Muzwezi or some like Amazon Chinese knockoff brand, but they do work adequately so if you guys are interested in these they're like 20 bucks for like 10 of them which is a pretty good deal and then i'm also using my spectrum gear i got the ar6210 uh, that's actually new re newly repaired from the repair video that i just published and uh, my Spectrum DX6E as a transmitter. However, if you guys are looking into a transmitter, um, I would recommend going with something a little bit cheaper, such as the Spectrum DXE. Um, so if you're not overly committed into the hobby yet, you don't know if you're gonna like it, if this is your first airplane, uh, I would recommend something like that so you don't drop like 150 bucks on a transmitter um, if you aren't even sure that you're gonna like this hobby yet. So yeah, but the DX6E is pretty much everything that you'll ever need if you're looking for a good transmitter. Um, I've had it and it's been really capable of, you know, outfitting all my models with all of the things like flaps and a different dual rates and things like that. Of course, I guess earlier channels and things like that. So yeah, definitely if you're looking into something, DX6E is a great full-time transmitter, but um, the DXE is a great transmitter for beginners or even like the Blade MLP or any like ready to fly DSMX uh, pieces of kit or you know the FR Sky systems will work too. I'm sure there's plenty of other content on YouTube for you guys to go check out if you're looking for a transmitter, but that's just my two cents. I like the Spectrum gear. Um, I, I'm a little bit more um, biased towards them since I used them when I was into RC cars and things like that. So I know that they're reliable. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into this build. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna set our foam off to the side and get our plans out into the forefront of this build process. All right, so you can see we've got our plans here and basically how this is set up, you wanna read all the specifications and make sure that you've got everything you're gonna need to build this plane. And make sure you understand this drawing key. If it's not uh, understandable, or if you don't kind of get what it's trying to say, uh, you can watch the build video for the FT uh, Simple Cub and you will see everything all clearly marked out because uh, Josh Vixler does a great job in that video of helping you guys learn how to build and fly your planes. Um, but basically what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be tiling these plans out. So of course they're not the same size. You can't fit every single little piece onto an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Basically we've got tile one right here and it's just gonna go in order assuming you printed it out in order from top to bottom. You'll see that they're each label. It's gonna say tile A1. So as you go along, uh, you'll see that it's A and then one, so A, one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight. So it's a, a two by four, four across, two up and down uh, process here. So I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, then seven and eight, just like that. And once you get that all out, you can see all the parts that you are going to be cutting out. And we're gonna go ahead and tape this all up. And there's a lot of good reference lines here. All these vertical and horizontal lines on the edges here are used uh, to line up with the other sheets of paper. 
So just kind of do the overlaps, assuming that you right upper left hand corner uh, justified this correctly, then you will have a no problem just taping these all together and then you can cut out each individual piece. All right, so now it's time to go ahead and look back at the work that we've just completed. It's our first big milestone in the scratch build process. We've gotten all of our pieces taped out together. And you wanna go ahead and make sure that you tape up every single seam with at least three or four pieces of tape. Um, in any major lines, you can see there's lines of all different colors, but my rule of thumb is any major line that goes across two pages, you wanna make sure it's covered in tape. That'll make it when you cut out each piece a lot easier to do. Now, there's a few directions you can go here. Actually, when you take this piece right here, it's the same size as one of our sheets of foam. So if you want to go ahead and use some uh, spray adhesive and actually tape this down or adhere this down to your foam, you can do that at this time if you so desire. However, the way that I like to do it and the way that kind of saves foam, in my opinion, is uh, just to cut out each piece out of the paper and lay it on the foam, tape it to the foam, and then cut around it. That's just a little bit more simple and it saves foam in the end. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do right now. I'm going to cut out each one of these little pieces out of the paper and then transfer them to the foam and cut them out of foam. All right, so we've gotten all the paper templates for my pieces cut out, and you can see there's quite a few of them, especially the small ones. So when we're transferring to the foam, I like to start with the wings and the fuselage, just get the two big ones out of the way and then start working on the smaller ones as we go. But in no particular order, it doesn't really matter. And there's one thing that I need you guys to remember as you're building, especially if it's your first time scratch building a plane, and that is the amount of time that you put into your uh, template here in the foam core is going to kind of directly affect the level of quality that you're going to have down the road. So if you make these lines extra straight, maybe even use a straight edge, it's going to take a lot more time. However, it's going to look a lot better in the end. However, if you're just a beginner, I'd recommend just not caring too much about getting it totally perfect. I mean, try your best, but if you get it totally perfect the first time, yeah, that's going to look nice. But if you just crash it in the ground again, it's going to be that much more heartbreaking and at that much more of a cost to you because you put more time into it. So for me, I'm going to try to do pretty good here, but I'm not going to stress over it that much because no plane is going to be perfect and you kind of just have to face that at some point. Now let's go ahead and just start off uh, with this wing piece right here. Uh, just a few things to note, uh, usually the blue is a bevel, the red is score, and the green is optional slash reference line. So if you guys are building a three channel, don't worry about any of the green uh, reference lines on the wings for the ailerons or these reference lines for the spar are pretty well lined up uh, with the um, servo holes right here. So you might have to use more attention for these uh, reference lines for the spar, uh, but don't worry about the um, aileron reference lines there. So yeah, that's pretty much it about this. I'm gonna go ahead and do this right now and you guys can go back to the time lapse. But once we get past this point, you can basically go ahead and watch the build video and learn how to build your FT Simple Cub. Uh, but I'll get back to you guys once I get all these pieces cut out.
All right, so we're here. We just finished up cutting out the pieces for the FT Simple Cub out of the foam core. And it took me about an hour and 20 minutes in between this past time lapse, according to my GoPro. Um, so we're about two hours or so into this entire process. So yes, the scratch build process is pretty time consuming and that's what Flight Test is telling you when they want you to buy a speed build kit. You want ease and accuracy in your lines, then you're gonna get that in a speed build kit. But if you're willing to spend 30 to $60 on a speed build kit, then by all means, go ahead. However, this is only a few bucks and it just took me an hour or two to get that done. So that's the trade off here and you have to realize that maybe it's worth it or not for you. But at this point, we could just treat it like a speed build kit because that's basically where we are at. So yeah, we got all the foam parts cut out and it's time to fire up that build video that Flight Test has provided. Josh Bixler does a great job explaining on how to build this plane. Uh, so I'll go ahead and leave that link in the description below and I'm actually gonna go ahead and load it up myself because I've never built this plane before and I make, wanna make sure I do it right. So yeah, follow along with me as I build this plane. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and go back to the time lapse now, but I'll leave any build notes and tips and tricks that I learned while building this plane to the end. All right, let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so we're here in about three quarters of the way through the build of this airplane. And as you guys can see, uh, it's really taking shape. Now, there is just a few little things that I'd like to address about the build so far that I think could be made a little bit easier if Flight Test were to release like a version two or an update to these plans in any way. And first off, I just really don't like the dihedral system in this wing. It kind of threw me for a loop at first. The dual dihedral or like polyhedral that this wing has is kind of confusing and it was really hard to get it balanced out perfectly. So I don't think that that wing dihedral is even on each side, which is kind of concerning for me, especially if I want this plane to track straight. But for beginners, I think it's gonna be really good. Um, it's just not that easy to kind of work with and build. Um, but other than that, I think that this wing is really solid and I like how it went together pretty easily, um, especially if you're a first time builder, this is gonna be a cakewalk for you and all of the flight test fold over wings build this way. So you're gonna have good luck if you can get this done uh, building other flight test models. Now about the fuselage, there's just a few things I really don't like. The mounting system uh, for the tail is a little bit messy in my opinion. I feel like the plans are really, really uh, specific on how you can uh, cut this and I cut it just a little bit off and I found that I was having to correct myself on how square it was and there wasn't really a good gauge like there is on the FT Scout to see if this is completely perpendicular to the fuselage. When you're looking at it like this, you can see mine might just be off by a little bit. I'm not totally sure and I still have to glue it down all the way uh, so I can go ahead and make adjustments later. It's just a little bit frustrating knowing that I have to put a little bit more time into it than I would have liked to. Now my power pad mounted in pretty well and I just went ahead and glued it in. If you guys are building for the first time, I definitely recommend just gluing your power pod straight into the airframe. Uh, it's kind of worth it in my opinion, especially with the price of my electronics that I'm using. I'd rather just buy another set of electronics for my other airplane airframes instead of swapping them out later. Um, but that's definitely up to you. I just like it because it makes the motor mount a little bit more solid and you get a less vibrations and a more solid power connection and obviously then it helps it track more straight and be a little bit more efficient in the air. So yeah, other than that, it's a pretty straightforward flight test build. I don't have much else to complain about, um, but it's a really, really good plane. The one thing that's holding me up right now is my servo setup. Um, I have these four servos that I was uh, thinking that they all worked and they're ready to drop in this plane, but two of them are off of the FT Arrow. Um, and as you guys know, if you watched that, video, I'm actually having some problems with my servos right now. Uh, so they're being really twitchy and I'm just gonna go ahead and order some new ones and add them to the plane on a later date. As well as my receivers are a little bit less than ideal for this situation. So I might go ahead and just throw another receiver into my Amazon cart uh, to use with these later as well. So yeah, that's pretty much it for my update at the current moment. As you can see, I only have a few more pieces which are just for my landing gear. I'm probably gonna do that off camera. It's pretty straightforward if you follow along with the build video. Um, but if you guys are building at home, uh, I would just recommend to take it slow, keep it easy. There's a few times where I kind of lost my cool and just went, um, you know, really fast when I could have taken my time and made it look a little bit more clean. And that's basically how it is on every build. If you take your time, you'll get a better result. Um, but some people aren't willing to put in the time uh, so then you're not gonna get as good a result. So that's just how it is sometimes. Now, yeah, that's pretty much all my thoughts I have on the Simple Cub right now. It is turning out 
to be a really solid aircraft at this time. Uh, there are a few things that are a little rough around the edges that we're going to have to work out. Um, but other than that, I'm really excited to see where this plane goes. Now, that's it for part one of this video. If you guys are interested in part two, that'll be coming out probably in the next week or so as I finish this plane up. That's going to be finishing the electronics, getting it all set up. I'm going to film all that for you guys, and then we're going to take it out for a maiden. And I'll give you my flight review of this plane and bring it back into the shop for a wrap up. So yeah, I think we're about halfway through the process of this review video. So if you guys are interested to stick around, make sure to like and subscribe uh, so that you don't miss this, especially if you turn that little bell on. Anyway, let's go ahead and just head to the outro here. Um, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.